Today we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Sunday, June 18th, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link to our Patreon in the description and comment section below. New York Yankees vs Boston Red Sox The Yankees, who were missing key players Aaron Judge, Nestor Cortez Jr., and Carlos Rodon, were hoping for a strong start from Domingo German in the series opener against the Red Sox. However, German was shelled for seven runs in two innings, and the Yankees fell to Boston 15-5. The Yankees also committed two errors and left 19 runners on base. Manager Aaron Boone was not happy with his team's performance. We didn't play well tonight, he said. We've played really well over the last 10 days, we just haven't put a lot of points on the board. Tonight we were at least able to get some runs on the board, but overall we just did not play a very clean game. New York will send Clark Schmidt to the mound on Sunday in Game 2 of the doubleheader. Schmidt is 2-6 with a 4.70 ERA and a 1.40 whip. He pitched well in his last start against the Red Sox, allowing just one run and four hits in 5.1 innings. However, Boston won the game 3-2. Pitching has not been a major issue for the Yankees this season, as they rank fourth in baseball with a 3.73 ERA and fifth in whip at 1.22. However, the team's offense has struggled at times, and they will need to improve their performance if they want to win the series against the Red Sox. The Red Sox have won two consecutive games against the Yankees and two consecutive games overall. The team has not been able to string together a winning streak longer than eight games, which they did from late April to early May. During that stretch, they beat legitimate teams like Cleveland and Toronto. However, since then, they have not won more than four consecutive games. They came into this series having lost two of three games to Colorado at home. On Friday, just Turner helped the team with two home runs and six RBIs, while outfielder Masataka Yoshida added four hits and three RBIs. If Paxton starts, the Yankees will be facing a tough challenge. They have struggled against left-handed pitching all season, hitting just .220 against lefties. This is understandable, as Judge is a huge loss for their lineup. He is a power hitter who can also draw walks, and his absence has made it difficult for the Yankees to score runs. Schmidt is a right-handed pitcher who has struggled on the road this season, with a 5.4 ADRA. He has also been hit hard by lefties, as they are hitting .313 against him. This is good news for the Red Sox, who have a number of dangerous left-handed hitters, including Rafael Devers, Alex Verdugo, and Masataka Yoshida. The Yankees will need to find a way to get their offense going if they want to win this game. They will need to be patient at the plate and try to work the count against Schmidt. If they can get on base, they will have a chance to score runs against the Red Sox bullpen, which has been shaky this season. I know this is a risky pick because the Red Sox just put up 15 runs on Friday. But Boston had gone under for 5 of their last 6 before exploding on Friday. Schmidt isn't that bad a pitcher and Paxton, when healthy, is one of the better left-handers in the American League. The Yankees have gone under in 6 of their last 10 games with a push. They've averaged just 3.6 runs per game over their last seven contests. Take the under. St. Louis Cardinals vs New York Mets St. Louis enters this game having been swept in their previous series against the Giants and having split the first two games of their current three-game series against the Mets. In their most recent 5-3 win, Adam Wainwright got the start and the win for the Cardinals tossing 6.1 innings in which he allowed seven hits that resulted in three earned runs. From then on it was a bullpen game for the cards with Pallant and Gallegos recording saves while Jordan Hicks got the save in the ninth. On the offensive end the Cardinals totaled 8 hits and 5 runs in the game. Brendan Donovan and Paul Goldschmidt had the team's only multi-hit games with Donovan going 2-5 with an RBI and a run scored, while Goldschmidt went 2-4 with 2 RBIs, a run scored, and a home run. Overall it was a good win for the Cardinals against a quality opponent. New York enters this game having split the two-game Subway series and having split the first two games of their current three-game series against the Cardinals. In their most recent 5-3 loss, 
Kodai Senga got the start and the loss for the Mets tossing 6.2 innings in which he allowed 5 hits that resulted in 4 earned runs while striking out 8. From then on it was a bullpen game for the Mets which did a good job of closing out the game outside of Brooks Raley's one run in the 8th. On the offensive end the Mets totaled 9 hits and 3 runs in the game. Brett Beatty and Luis Gillorm had the only multi-hit games for the Mets with 2 hits apiece, while Gillorm also tallied 2 RBIs and a run scored courtesy of his 2-run bomb in the 5th. Overall it was a tough loss for the Mets as the offense and defense couldn't compensate this game. I am taking the Mets to win this game for a few reasons. The Mets lost the previous game due to a poor pitching performance from Senga and a lack of situational hitting. However, I expect the Mets to bounce back in Game 3 and produce runs regardless of the pitching matchup. Both pitchers, Liberatore and Carrasco, have struggled this season, with ERAs of 5.14 and 5.71, respectively. I also expect the Mets' bullpen to continue to pitch well, and I believe that this game will be a relatively high-scoring affair. The Cardinals have also been struggling against the Mets recently, as they are 1-4 in their past 5 meetings in New York and 1-5 in their past 6 meetings overall. For these reasons, I am confident in taking the Mets to win this game. I am taking the over in this game for a few reasons. I expect this to be a high-scoring game due to the pitching matchup and the tendencies of both lineups. The Cardinals are starting Liberatore, who has a 5.14 ERA and a 1.57 whip. Carrasco gets the start for the Mets, posting a 5.71 ERA and a 1.46 whip on the season. Both starters are prone to run scored, and both offenses tend to score in bunches when they do score. The bullpens for both teams have also been a little inconsistent, so I expect to see a handful of runs in the late innings that should carry us over the total. In terms of trends, the Mets have gone over in 6 of their past 8 games against a left-hander and in 4 of their past 6 games following a loss. In addition, when these teams have faced off in the past, the over is 15-7-2 in their past 24 meetings overall. For these reasons, I am confident in taking the over for this matchup. Pittsburgh Pirates vs Milwaukee Brewers The Pittsburgh Pirates are very much still in the hunt in the NL Central Division as the season turns to summer. The Pirates have seemingly been ahead of schedule this season with a winning record and battling the Brewers for supremacy in the division. On Friday night, the Pirates slipped a half game behind the Brewers after dropping a 5-4 decision. The Pirates fell behind early but did battle back, even leaving the bases loaded in the ninth inning in the one-run loss. On Saturday, the Pirates dropped to a game and a half out of first place in a 5-0 loss to the Brewers. The Pirates were held to six hits, five of them singles, in the loss. The Brewers have to feel good about closing this series with Peralta on the hill. While the team has struggled to pick up victories with him on the hill in three of the last four games, he has done a solid job all season in getting the Brewers deep into games with seven quality starts. He also has an above-average K-9 rate at home with over 10 per contest. Pirate starter Ortiz has had trouble putting away hitters and has a K-9 rate of just over 5 per outing this season. He also has a whip approaching 2 and has coughed up 16 hits in his last 10 innings of work. While the Brewers have struggled to put runs on the board, they should be able to get base runners against Ortiz. Look for Milwaukee to close the series with a win and head into next week in first place in the NL Central Division. Take the Brewers with a money line of minus 155. The Brewers were expected to challenge for the NL Central Division crown after falling flat in the second half of last season and relinquishing the division lead to the eventual division-winning Cardinals. While the Brewers have been battling for the division lead this season, it hasn't been pretty as the team has hovered around the .500 mark and lost six straight games heading into this showdown series with the Pirates. On Friday night, the Brewers moved past the Pirates and into first place with a 5-4 win. Hoping to make it two straight wins, the Brewers got a stellar performance from Wade Miley in his return from the IL to win 5-0. Miley went five innings and allowed just two hits in the win. Our total pick is under.